Do you need help with setting cue points in Rekordbox? Then don't worry, I'm going to show you how to do that in today's video. Hi, I'm Dan from Beatmatch Guru. Let's dive right into the tutorial. Okay, so in order to set cue points in Rekordbox, you can do it two ways. So there's memory cues and there's also hot cues. So in this option here, you can select hot cues, which gives you access to setting hot cues using your Pioneer DJ controller, for example, with the performance pads. So you can set them uh, individually at, at different periods throughout the track and that gives you control. So you can use those hot cues as markers. So markers can help you understand how far you've got into a track and then you might need to queue up the actual track to then play and then that will allow you to mix in the new track which is really helpful for DJing um, especially if you're planning like quite a long set that's really helpful so you know wh when and where to start mixing in the track at a particular point so you're not rushing or you've not done it too early so it makes things a lot smoother when you're mixing the next part is memory cues. So memory cues you can save just the same as hot cues but they're just added slightly differently. They're not necessarily added uh, using the different pads on the, the DJ controller itself but instead you use uh, you can use the cue button here and also click on the memory call or memory cue loop here. The other aspect is that on the actual DJ controller itself you can select the memory cue as well. So let's show you a quick example of both. So starting with the memory queue, all you have to do in Rekordbox itself, if, if you're using it to set the memory queues, you can simply move the cursor in line with a beat grid, for example. I like to use the queue uh, quantize switched on uh, because that helps to snap to the beat grid. Otherwise, it won't snap to the beat grid, which makes it slightly uh, harder. So it massively benefits you to click that. So in order to set a cue point or a, cue, a memory cue, click on cue itself, click on the memory button here, and you see it will show up in the, the memory cue box here. What's really interesting is that if you move it later and you click on cue and then memory, it will show them in order of the actual track in terms of time throughout the, the audio track itself. So that's really helpful. In order to get rid of it, if you don't like it, just hover over the time slot, click on the X and it will delete that memory queue. In order to set a, queue, a memory queue using the DJ controller itself, use the jog wheel. Use the jog wheel to set a point in time which you want to set the memory queue. Click on the queue button. Hold down shift and press memory button here. And see the red dot appear on the actual record box itself. And then that's set. If you want to delete a particular memory queue using the DJ controller itself, simply use the buttons left or right to select the particular queue point. As you can see, it's moving left and right as I'm moving left and right. All you have to do is hold down shift and hold down delete button here. And you'll see the cue point disappear. In order to set hot cues, simply move to a particular point in the track and click on hot cue on the button. And you'll see that it will pop up here. You can also change the color of the pads to represent different types of hot cues. And you can right click and also add comments. So you can type in intro, for example, and say if you wanted to click on the preview, it will take you further down the line. And you can also set another hot cue by clicking on hot cue there, and right click, and you could type in drop. So that's a really good way of using as, as marker for the drop. So you know when to cue in the next track over here or if you just want to know roughly a point in the intro, you can set another marker or actually use it as a cue point. In order to do that on a DJ controller, you need to go to hot cue section here and you'll see 
if a hot cue has actually been set on record box itself, these two will highlight in, in red. The ones that are not activated or full with a timestamp will be greyed out or not just, they just won't be lit. So in order to set a new one, again, use the jog wheel to move where you want to go. Say we go two bars after, and then you can click on the button and it will set cue point C in the actual record box itself. So from there you can then edit, add comments as to what the naming convention that you'd like it to be. So that's how you set them up. Another cool trick I'd like to show you with you today is the beat jump option, which makes it quite easy to set phrases. It's really cool technique to use. So if you click on the drop down and then you click on beat jump, you'll see various numbers here. And what these various numbers mean is how many bars is that cursor up here going to skip? So I, I like to work with 32 or 64 beats. So let's line up to the drop. And then from there, what you can do is click back 32 beats. So you can see here, that's where it first started. And now you're 32 beats back. So the point of that is that I know for a fact that I like to mix with 32 beats and then that allow me enough time to set a cue marker to then drop in the next track and start mixing in. So that's just a quick and easy way to figure out different phrases. So once you've actually gone beat jump back 32 beats, you can do that 64 if you like, you then just click on hot cue and then you can click on hot cue here. Okay, that's it. Play around with the hot cues. I hope you find that very helpful to become better at DJing. Hope you enjoyed that session. Uh, if you want to see a full record box beginner's guide, then click on the video now. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy beatmatchguru.com. Lots of tips and advice in my blog there. Also, please subscribe and like the video. Cheers.